Hello, my name is Ash Kapoor, one of the clinical leads at the Levitas Group. Uh, today we're going to be looking at an overview of gut health. It's been quite controversial recently and we talk a lot about gut health, but really what is it that we're looking for? So what I'd like to do is introduce Dr. Lizzie Almas, who is a functional medically trained doctor as well as a conventionally trained doctor, so has an insight from both elements. So welcome Lizzie. Thank you. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is this word called gut microbiome. Um, we know about good bugs and bad bugs or good bacteria and bad bacteria, but from your perspective what does this actually mean? What is a gut microbiome? Ultimately it's a population of all sorts of bacteria, viruses, fungus, parasites that live naturally um, in our gut intestines, okay. small large intestines. Um, and really our understanding is quite recent and it's developing, but what we know is that these microbes in our gut have a huge impact on our well-being and our health. Yes, yes. And so we coexist with these in normal life, do we? Definitely. So they come hand in hand. We have sort of have the human genome and then we sort of have the bacterial. And it's sort of called the second genome. Wow. Um, wow. So it's a massive area. Yes, and my understanding is this number of bacteria can be somewhere near about 23 trillion. We are made of 30 trillion cells, so we are truly coexisting with these bacteria. Oh, fully. Um, if anything, they're sort of leading us uh, without us potentially knowing. Yes. Um, and really it's us delving into what their scene is, right. um, more so than the other way around at the moment. So now that we know we coexist with these bacteria, and they are, they're good for us, these bacteria? Within reason, absolutely, of course. They're, if they're in the right balance, mm -hmm. um, if the microbiome is balanced, ultimately, between the good and the bad, they're definitely good for us. Um, however, it's when they become imbalanced, or what we would call dysbiotic, is when problems can arise, okay. and symptoms can arise. Okay, so when you have more of one group than the other, exactly. you can have problems. Yes. And um, what kind of symptoms would patients present with when they are imbalanced? So ultimately the most common ones are the ones we might think of and know. So bloating, constip constipation, nausea, vomiting. Mm. Some more kind of ones that you might not realise are part of the microbiome are the headaches, uh, obviously pain, scratching, itchiness, rashes, eczema. Um, inflammatory diseases, so autoimmune right. diseases, can all stem from a sort of dysbiotic microbiome. Interesting. Yeah. So with that list you've given, my immediate thought is almost every symptom could potentially be linked back to the gut microbiome not being in balance. Definitely. So ultimately, the sort of principle is that the gut is one of the biggest providers of inflammation in the body when it's not balanced. And a lot of the symptoms that we just mentioned are side effects of that inflammation. So when you're trying to fix the problem, you would always start and look into the gut. Yes, that's interesting. And it kind of makes sense because it's an air, it's an input point for the body, just like the respiratory system is an input point as well. Um, and it can be influenced by the environment we're living in, by definition, what we're eating, what we're, um, how we're living, etc., can all influence this. What I didn't realise is that if it's that important, why are clinicians not spending more time looking at the gut microbiome? I think at the end of the day, it's, it's an evolving area. It's a new area of medicine. Um, a, a lot of clinicians aren't trained in that way. And that's obviously where a clinic like Levitas comes in because we have doctors who are trained to specifically target and look at that area as a source. Um, so it's just who you see. Yeah, but equally, when we go back to our ancestors who were living quite sparsely, um, things like kefir and natural probiotics were all part of their lives. They didn't know why they were doing it, but they know they felt better. So yeah. are we just rediscovering what we should have known a long time ago? Essentially, yeah, we're putting it back into practice. Yeah. We now from sort of studies and science, we sort of realised that it has a role for a reason. Um, and the amount that we've consumed in modern day in a sort of Western diet has okay. declined hugely. Okay. Thank you. One final point, just about gut microbiome. If every disorder is inflammation 
and the primary defense is the gut. Should we not assume that all our guts are bad to a varying extent and we should be doing something about it anyway? I would say so. So everything in modern life is to a certain extent working against us. And so by default, we're always combating something, stresses, chemicals, external nutrient deficiencies. They're all working against our guts. Um, and so we should be working on it daily um, to help yeah. restore it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's very interesting, but also it's very hopeful. It means that we can probably do something at source to at least eliminate some of these signals that we present with to the doctors. Thank you very much. Pleasure.